so I need new email marketing software. I used MailChimp for years, but I'm done with them. Done. So to find a replacement, I'm doing a deep dive on the top 26 email marketing tools. On this journey, I'll navigate unhelpful chatbots, strain my eyes reading fine print, build a massive comparison spreadsheet, and of course, send actual emails using the tool. So strap in, things are gonna get wild. I use email marketing for Atlas, a software company I started with my friend, Carl. But even though we're a software company, our email marketing needs are not super unique. They're similar to what most businesses need. We use email marketing for automations and newsletters. Automations is just basically a fancy word for saying we send email based on a trigger. In our case, when a user signs up for a 14 day free trial, they get a few automated emails. Day one, they get a welcome email. Day 13, they get a reminder that their free trial is almost done. In day 15, they get a notification that their trial is complete. We also send an email newsletter when we release a new feature. Though we don't send these emails to everybody, just to people who click this box during sign up. And that's it. That's all we do. A few automations and an occasional newsletter. It's not complicated. And like many people, for a long time, we used MailChimp for this. MailChimp is easily the biggest email marketing tool. Estimates have them at 64% of the market, while other email marketing tools make up just 36%. But that doesn't mean they're the best. And right now, I'm canceling MailChimp. So how did this happen? What turned me off of MailChimp? In the last two years, they've increased my price three times. So it's gotten more expensive. And I'm not the first person to point this out. Lots of people are complaining about this. But it was more than that because there was also the shady billing practices. And to explain that, let's rewind back to when I first signed up to MailChimp, 2011. Back then, if you clicked over to the pricing page, you'd see MailChimp charged per subscriber. As you got more subscribers, your price went up. But fast forward to 2019, and MailChimp makes a big change. Instead of subscribers, they start charging you per contact. Contact, that's a slippery weaselly word. Because if we read MailChimp's support docs, we see that they count subscribers as contacts, but also unsubscribers and even non-subscribers. So under the old pricing, you just paid for subscribers, but under the new, you also paid for unsubscribers and non-subscribers. Ugh, but wait, it gets dumber. You see, MailChimp charges you based on tiers of contacts. So let's say you have 1,300 contacts. Well, you'll want this tier. But let's say next month your list grows to 1,800 contacts. Well, MailChimp doesn't automatically move you up a tier if you grow. Instead, you incur overage charges. So next month, you have to guess at what tier you might grow to. And if you underestimate and go over, yeah, there's overage charges. So to recap, price increases, counting unsubscribers as contacts and overage charges. It all just got me mad and I started noticing all kinds of crazy things about MailChimp. For example, they constantly claim that they have award-winning customer support. They won the awards from this award show called the Stevies. The Stevies was started to restore public confidence after the Enron scandal, and guess what? Up to 40% of entries win, so award winning is a bit of a stretch. Then I noticed this sneaky checkbox when you sign up to MailChimp. By not checking the checkbox, you agree to be opted into their promotion emails. What? Ugh. Finally, MailChimp is owned by Intuit, and Intuit famously lobbied the U.S. government to stop Americans from filing their taxes for free, which is frankly straight up evil. So long story short, I'm done with MailChimp. So now that MailChimp is canceled, let's dive into research. I started by making a list of the top email marketing tools. As I researched these tools, I realized almost all of them used the same pricing model as MailChimp. You pay based on tiers of contacts. And this worried me. MailChimp had kind of screwed me on these tiers. Would other companies do the same? So the first thing I did was got rid of any companies that counted unsubscribers as a contact. I hated that MailChimp did that and I didn't want it again. Thankfully, only three companies did this. MailMoto, Drip, and Aweber. 
And by the way, here's a tip. Never trust pricing pages. Like Aweber literally says on their pricing page, you're charged per subscriber. But if you go to the help docs, this is where Aweber says they count unsubscribers toward your total count of subscribers, which is just dishonest, right? I mean, the prefix un literally means to make something the opposite. So how can an unsubscriber be a subscriber? I don't know. Anyways, onwards. Next, I got rid of any companies who had overage charges. I don't like overage charges. I don't wanna to have to think about avoiding them. I'm trying to run a business here. And I found a number of companies with hidden overage charges. Constant Contact, Get Response, MailJet, SendGrid, Benchmark, you're all out. I'm not saying you're bad companies. I'd just be much happier if you gave me the full cost up front. Finally, I wanted to know that if my contact list grew, that I would automatically move up a tier. Makes sense, right? But even more importantly, what if I deleted a bunch of contacts and my list got smaller? Would I automatically go down a tier? Well, unfortunately not. For example, on ConvertKit's pricing page, they say, we'll automatically upgrade you to the next level. But if you search through the support docs, you'll discover that they won't also automatically downgrade you to a previous level. Instead, they make you contact support. And it turns out a number of companies did this. Active Campaign, Clavio, HubSpot, Campaigner, ConvertKit, Email Octopus, Zoho Campaigns, you're all out. Now, is this a big deal? Yes, in case it's not clear, having to think about this is a burden. I'm trying to run a business. I don't wanna to have to stay on top of my email marketing software's billing. And to me, it's also just dishonest. If you're gonna automatically increase my price, you should automatically decrease it too. But I couldn't help but wonder, was I being too hard on these companies? Did I expect too much from capitalism? It was just companies like ConvertKit made me feel jaded. Like look at this video ConvertKit posted recently. Really establishing the company mission to be, we exist to help creators earn a living. The shift for me was realizing it's not me taking center stage. It's me sharing this mission and being the, the spotlight or the voice for this mission that we're all doing together. What are you talking about? We exist to help creators earn a living. How many ConvertKit creators right now are overpaying because they don't even realize they have to manually downgrade their tier? Obviously some, because you put it in your support docs, although conveniently buried at the bottom of the page. And I mean, I worried I was missing something obvious. Like maybe there's a technical reason that I'm missing. So I asked one company, Campaigner, why they'd make the upgrade automatic, but not the downgrade. Here's what they said. That's just the way things work. Well, no, not at all. Because guess what? The 10 remaining companies don't do that. Big shout out to these companies. But I still wanted to reduce my list one more time. So I calculated what I'd pay monthly for each company. I got rid of anyone who cost more than $200. MailChimp had been costing me over $500 a month, so anything less than $200 seemed like a major improvement. So campaign monitor, MooSend, Intercom, and OmniSend, it's just not gonna work. Nothing personal. I'm not against companies charging a high price, but my needs are pretty basic. And there we have it. My list was down to six. I called them the Elite Six. By this point, I'd already done a lot of research. So if you appreciate my work at all, I have links to each email marketing tool in the video description. Almost all the links are affiliate links. So if you wanna try one of these tools, click those links and you'll be supporting my work. I hope it's clear I'm not some sponsored vlogger. The tool I choose is the current tool we're using for Atlas. And it's a major pain to switch, so I can guarantee you this is our choice for the long term. Anyway, it's time to finally actually try the Elite Six. First up, Brevo. Okay, yeah, that, that music was a little much. We're just testing software here. And this is Brevo. It has a nice interface, not too cluttered. And I was able to design my emails just like I had in MailChimp. And automations worked exactly as I needed. It's worth pointing out that Brevo offers more than just email marketing. There's lots of additional products. WhatsApp marketing, SMS marketing, live chat, and chatbots. And their pricing is unique because unlike most tools, it's based on how many emails you send, not how many contacts you have. So solid interface, lots of additional products, and the monthly price for me came in at $95. 
really good. Brevo is a thumbs up. Next up, Loops. Loops had a nice minimalist interface and like Brevo, I could design my email how I wanted. Unfortunately, their automations editor was just a little too simple for me. It didn't do what we needed it to do. So nice minimalist interface, but automations were too simple. And at a monthly price of $199, Loops just wasn't going to be a fit for me. Next up was Flowdesk. Flowdesk had a really minimalist interface. Unfortunately, they didn't have our font enter, which is not exactly a deal breaker, but it's something. And like Loops, their automations workflow was just a little too simple for us. So minimalist interface, but automations were too simple. But here's the thing, the price, $35 a month, that's crazy. But there's a bit of an asterisk. On Reddit, people seem to be complaining that Flowdesk disabled their account without notice. So Flowdesk gets a shoulder shrug, basically a yellow light. I'm just not up for rolling the dice on this service, but comment below if you try Flowdesk. Next up was ClickFunnels. I found their email editor clunky and uh, they didn't have our font, but honestly, more than anything, the vibe was just kind of off. I mean, they offer a lot of features, but I just needed basic email marketing. I don't need all this other stuff. Plus they required a credit card for the free trial, which I don't love. And they kept pushing these coaching sessions, which I mean, I'm good. It just didn't feel like the right fit. And Reddit kind of confirmed my suspicions with some suggestions that it's basically a MLM scheme. So I'm out. At this point, I started to get a bit worried. Brevo was the only company that seemed like it might work for us so far. And the next company I tried, SendPulse, was also a pretty quick no. The email editor was clunky and they had no web fonts. And like, I, I don't want notifications. Overall, I found their interface just kind of a mess with too many things calling for my attention. And at a monthly price of $151, I just, I wasn't interested. But fortunately, things took a turn for the better with the next company. Mail or light. I found the interface to be refreshingly clear and straightforward. Part of this is because MailerLite is focused on email marketing, none of the other stuff. Their automations were great and worked for my needs. For example, it even let me mark a subscriber as unsubscribed or even delete a subscriber at the end of an automation. Other companies don't let you do this, probably because they charge based on contacts. So I appreciate MailerLite letting me do this. And the email editor was solid, had my font, and I was able to design my usual email. So easy to use, strong automations, and focused on email marketing. The price came in at $143, and it was a thumbs up from me. Now, before I tell you which tool I used, I should mention email deliverability. Deliverability is what percentage of emails you send actually arrive in your contacts inbox. And what tool you choose can have an impact on deliverability. How much of an impact? Hard to say. And frankly, something I'm not an expert in. So if you're worried about that, if you're thinking about that, you'll probably want to seek somebody out other than me. So at the end of the day, there were a couple tools that I would recommend to friends. Brevo, Loops, and MailerLite. And maybe Flowdesk. My choice in the end was MailerLite. It was a bit more expensive than Brevo, but has a really easy to use interface and that's really important to me. And I like that it's mostly for email marketing. I think that leads to a focused product. It's funny, the name kind of threw me off at first. Like light sounds kind of like a light version of a tool, not a full version. Then I read a bit more about their philosophy and it made a little more sense to me. Specifically, keeping it light means clean and functional design. I think that's what I was attracted to when I first used the tool. More than anything, I'm just happy to have found an email marketing tool for Atlas that I'm hopeful will be a long-term fit. And I already mentioned this once, but this video took a long time to research and to film. So if you appreciate the work, there are affiliate links in the video description. In any case, a very happy goodbye to MailChimp and a hopeful hello to MailerLite. Thanks for watching.